Hello, I'm Father Kevin O'Neill. I'm a Redemptorist priest uh, speaking to you from the Redemptorist Provincial Residence in Washington, D.C. A warm welcome to you today as I reflect on scriptures for the third Sunday of Advent. But let's begin with a prayer. Lord, that you are God with us, Emmanuel, and that we are your beloved children, brings such joy to us and to our world. Reach those who are lost and searching with a heartfelt sense of your presence and love. Allow your peace to bring comfort to our anxious world. As we all go about the holiday season, let the message of great joy pierce through all the noise and into our hearts and into the hearts of your children throughout the world. We make our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our gospel passage today comes to us from the Gospel of St. John. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all people might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The testimony John gave when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask, who are you, was the absolute statement, I am not the Messiah. They questioned him further. Who then? Elijah? I'm not Elijah. Are you the prophet? No, he replied. Finally, they said to him, tell us who you are so that we can give some answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? And he said, quoting the prophet Isaiah, I am a voice in the desert crying out, make straight the way of the Lord. Those whom the Pharisees had sent proceeded to question him further. If you're not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet, why do you baptize? John answered him, I baptize with water. There is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is to come after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to unfasten. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing, the Gospel of the Lord. You know, I heard a story uh, not so long ago about a man who went to visit a nursing home, and he was after hours. And he entered the nursing home, and there was a woman there, Mary, who kind of monitored everything. And she said rather harshly to him, you know, you're not supposed to be here. Visiting hours are over. And he stood up and he said, do you know who I am? And Mary softened her voice a little bit and she said, no, but if you go over to the nurse's station, I'm sure they'll be able to help you. An interesting question, no? Do you know who I am or who am I? The most truthful, the most humble answer that we could give if we understand humility as being truthful about who we are before God, one another, and with ourselves, is that we are beloved children of God, brothers and sisters to one another. And that, my friends, is cause of great joy. Today is Gaudete Sunday, or Rejoice Sunday. It's a cause for joy in this season of Advent when we look to the past, to all that God has done in salvation history. It's a cause for the joy during this season when we look to the future, as we await the second coming of Jesus Christ and the fullness of the kingdom of God. And it is a cause for joy to see what God is doing right now in our midst. All of this should leave us with a great conviction of God's love for us. So succinctly said in John's gospel that God so loved the world that he sent his only son. So who do we think we are? We are all beloved children of God. How could we all be beloved of God? I remember a man challenging me on that one time and I asked him, how many children do you have? He said, three. I asked him, which one do you love the most? 
He said, well, I love them all for different reasons. As much as we sometimes talk as if we have to ration love in doses, as if in a measuring cup, we really don't have to do that, and God certainly cannot do that. So there's nothing illogical or impossible about saying that we are all the beloved of God. And this same God who loves us anoints us. Now, when I hear the word anointed, sometimes I think it's someone being set apart in a place of honor, on a pedestal. But in our faith tradition, an anointing doesn't put one up there somewhere in a place of honor, but it rather it encourages them to service. It doesn't encourage them to say, do you know who I am? But rather, what can I do? We are anointed in our baptism, in our confirmation, and for some in ordination. But that anointing is never something that is to puff us up. We're anointed for mission. We're anointed for others. And we hear that in the first reading today where the prophet Isaiah says, the spirit of God has anointed me. Why? To bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and release to prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord. The word of God today presents others who have also been anointed. St. Paul anointed to preach to the Gentiles and who encourages them to remain joyful as they await Jesus' second coming. The responsorial psalm today is Mary's song, her Magnificat, Mary who was anointed to be the mother of our Savior. And of course, in the gospel, John the Baptist, who was given the opportunity to say, yes, I am Elijah, or yes, I am the prophet, or even yes, I am the Messiah. Given the opportunity to boast, do you know who I am? He doesn't, because he knows who he is. He's anointed to point the way to Jesus Christ. So I think that the word of God today invites us to rest in joy in who we are as beloved of God. You know, there are many reasons in our world and even challenges in our personal lives to be people without joy. But I pray, brothers and sisters, that the source of our joy is our heartfelt knowledge and sense of being loved and held in life by God. A God who promises to be with us today, even as he has been in the past. Again, this Advent season reminds us that we look to the past, if we look to the future, if we look to the present, we always have Emmanuel, God with us. And sometimes that God is with us in the listening ear of a friend or help that someone offers us. It's in the prophetic voice that calls us to peace and justice, to care for and to look out for neighbors near and far. God's presence is in the assistance and service that we give as anointed ones through our baptism. But make no mistake, Emmanuel, God is with us. And this is cause for our joy in our hearts. So as we hear the word of God today, may we be grateful for and live deeply in our hearts the truth of who we are. Do you know who I am? I am beloved of God. You are beloved of God. And may we live out our baptismal anointing as instruments of the love of God in our world now, cooperating with God and building up his kingdom, even as we await its fullness living in love and service of God and of one another. And let us pray our closing prayer. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for your closeness to us, for what you have done in the past, what you are doing now in our lives, and for the fullness of your kingdom that we await. Grace us to live as your anointed servants, so that through our love and service, people may experience joy in our world now, and that we and they may experience even now something of the life of the kingdom would come. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
So thank you for joining the Redemptorist online preaching today. We hope you'll join us again next Wednesday, December the 13th, when Father John Olenek will be preaching. So thank you and may God bless you. Thank you.